That's fierce. I'm That's sorry for your neighbours. No, oh, don't worry about it. They're, they're <laughs> used to it. So we're still here with uh, Callum from the Bolex Engineering. Uh, can't get rid of him. Uh, we're going to talk about his Triumph Thruxton R. What are you calling it? The Debolex Special. Yeah, yeah. Everything that we build now, sort of the, the one-offs are the Bolex Specials. Yeah. Okay. And uh, you would have seen this bike if you come to Bike Shed London 2017 at Tobacco Dock last summer. To the seriously untrained eye, it sort of looks like a stock-ish black Thruxton R, but it's a million miles from that, isn't it? Uh, yeah, yeah. Very much removed from that, but still very much a cafe racer, yeah. tank seat tail. Yeah. Uh, wheels I know are, are stock. Stock rims, yeah. Stock rims. Yeah. But you've had those vapour blasted and clear out uh, is that right? Uh, sand blasted and clear out, yeah. Right. Whether the sand blast is slightly more coarse, so it'll okay. give that kind of old school, more cast kind of look if you like. And then that was the idea, to, get, to give the customer a traditional looking bike, but bang up to date. Exactly, yeah. yeah. It's still, yeah, just, it, although it looks classic, it's still just got those modern twists to it. Stock discs or have these been up? Uh, ISR over? discs, three twenty one discs, yeah. And the, the calipers are? Brembo calipers. They did a, I think they did a short run of what they called the Cafe Racer caliper, I think. So um, this is not what's on the standard trucks and are? No, no, they okay. are you know, an uprated Brembo mm -hmm. caliper, which we then stripped and had Cerakoted. Um, in a silver there with a gold inlay. And the, the forks are the stop shell of big piston forks? With Maxton internals. Maxton internals, yep. and again you've stripped the sort of faux Olin's gold off the outside. Yeah. And is that what's underneath or has that had another treatment? That's been clear anodized. And yeah, so I wanted that real silver look at the front. Or well, yeah, if anything that wasn't black, I wanted that nice silver look, which kind of got a nice classic feel to it. Okay. And the mudguard Bracket and mud guard is all handmade again. All handmade, yeah, aluminium guard and, and steel brackets. So and the, these are just folded in the workshop. Folded or welded on in yeah in various places, yeah. Welded the foot sides, holes for lightning. And the, this is a hand roll. Yeah. Beating an English wheel job. Exactly, yeah. I know from popping down to your workshop that this uh, rad shroud was a real ball leg. Yeah, there's, yeah, it was a lot of work to get that to sort of fit perfectly. You know, perfect, perfect gaps, perfect lines, and then to marriage itself with the belly pan. Because um, there was talk of, sort of doing a custom rad. Yeah. But that for me is a better solution, using the stock Absolutely. rad and putting the time and effort into making a really nice shroud yeah. for it. I mean, the stock rad works well. So for us, it's just about sort of dressing this, you know, dressing it a bit better and, you know, for the whole bike, you know, losing what we don't need and yeah. dressing up what is there. I don't know if you can see, Dan, that the, the belly pan is a functional thing. It's not just looking pretty. Um, that's chucking some air up underneath there. And, Call it, helping to call the engine, yeah. yeah. Call the, uh, but you've got rid of the cat, there's no cats under there. No right? cat anymore, no. And that's a um, crossover under there. Yeah, and with the, the new Triumphs, you know, that part of the frame is very wide to accommodate the cat. So what are the, the rails at the, the rails themselves, yeah. So, the, so without the belly, the, you know, there's, it looks, for me, I think it, without the cat, they look a little bit odd. You know, they are really quite wide, those, those yeah. frame shoes. So the belly kind of it covered that up a little bit, but it also you know, added to cooling and to the styling, obviously, of the bike. And this is, this is again aluminium, and this is made in, is that two sections? Yeah, two sections, yeah. There's a pinch bolt in the middle, and then there's bolts top and bottom, which hold that together. And then this is um, a whole separate unit as well. Exactly, yeah, that's held on with six bolts. That's what you need, yeah. And the, the yokes, are they, that's the bottom yoke Bottom yoke stock, stock, yeah. Top yoke, um, that's been machined by Fast Tech. Um, well, up, Fast Tech up in Suffolk, Fast yeah. Tech Racing. That's it. Um, so it looks similar, to the stock trucks and are the, the polish yoke that they're really proud of. Yeah. So you didn't want to use one of those. Didn't want to use that, yeah. And, and also we wanted to, to lower the bike a bit. So this has got a slight flatter profile. Okay. Um, that enables the, the fork tubes to come up a little bit, like dropping the front. Nice drilled sort of center nut, gives that kind of lightweight race look we were going for. Mm -hmm. That was Cerakoted. So, so Aluminium Cerakote. Cerakote. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, and these, these look like rental clip-ons to me. Rental clip-ons, again, Cerakote on the, on the clamping joint there. Yeah. Um, stock tubes and then uh, just drill to accommodate the wires. Is that Motone? Motone switch unit, yeah. And they've, um, been, they've been treated as well, haven't they? Cerakote as well, Cerakote. yeah. Along with the Magura master cylinders. These are really nice. Aren't they? That's super light. Really I know light. that's not what you're doing. That's yeah. Tri <laughs> Triumph, for that. what do they get? Some, uh, I mean, Triumph and, and then Magura, you know, to do a hydraulic conversion um, with this was just. Um, so it's standard is cable. Yeah. And you, you've gone for a hydraulic upgrade. That's it, yeah. And standard right. is light, to be fair, you know, it's, um, it's it not bad, light. but... What do they call it? It's not that... Oh, it's just... I should know, I was on the bloody launch, but they, yeah. they put a load of effort into, into the clutch to make it really easy going. Yeah. Assisted clutch, there we go. Camera down there, <laughs> what do we do? Uh, yeah, that's really, and there's ma matching 
Yeah. Machi Magura. That's it, yeah. Mars on this AC3s, side. Well. AC3s, which says top of the range sort of Magura, Mars cylinders. Uh, it's also nice to see some different units being made. A lot of the time people just go, oh, Brembo, Brembo, Brembo. Yeah. It's nice to see some different stuff being used. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, funny. I don't, you know, I, I love the look of these, and you don't see the Magura stuff around too much on the on the custom side of things. So, and with a bit a little bit of Cerakote, actually, I think they look, they look really they're really great and really functional. And Max, and you mentioned in the internals, these these top caps are really really smart. Like yeah, those. they're lovely. I mean, I love British Mac company, Max. British company, yeah, do, and do such a great job. Really easy to talk to on the phone and um, and to yeah, deal with. Yeah, what's the guys now? I had a chat to him recently about something and really helpful. Richard. Richard. Yeah. Yeah, really yeah nice Richard. Guy. Really nice guy. Nice family run business and. Um, yeah, always been really helpful for us with all our builds. So we, um, yeah, we try and use them as much as possible. And we'll, you've got Max and Shocks on the back. We'll go to the back in a minute, but they're a set of custom shops that they. They are, yeah. This bike. I think everything they do is bespokely made so for, tailored for that for project. For the, the rider, yeah. What they intend to use it for, etc. Exactly, yeah. Gotcha. And while we're still at the front, you've got Alan Key handy. I do. Dan, can you uh, come and have a look at this natty? <laughs> so this is a what, '60s race inspired front number board but needs to be practical and have a that's headlight. That's it, yeah. So that's why we, you know, we, we've, we've got the headlight behind there but also indicators, although you can't yeah. see them too much, they are just under there giving yeah. off plenty of light. So, okay. um, so yeah, we wanted, wanted to keep that kind of race vibe but, you know, we want, want the riders to be able to get home so at that, night. So. so that's pretty neat, you've rushed that off. Can, um, just great, can you zoom in on that, Dan? You know, it's not just a no, a dirty Allen key is what was that spin through? So that's a quick release catch, yeah. 90 degrees and then, then you're out? Yeah, yeah, it's only, um, yeah, it's a real quick, again from Pro Bolt, um, just their, their quick release catch. And you can and put your race fairings on with or something. Exactly, it's like a, yeah. It's like a smart Zeus connector, isn't it? Exactly, yeah. Yeah, it's really nice. So that is, what's that headlight from? So that is an aluminium headlight from the casing, it's cast aluminium. Um, I can't remember the name of the company we sourced that from, but it is a, a Lage 4 bulb in there, can so you it's just good. turn that on for us again? Yeah. It's really smart. Yeah, and then you've still got your sort of... Yeah, that's mean, I like that. And then turn it back on to side light. And has the customer got any plans for any track days? Will, it, will that number board ever see a number? Uh, I don't know. I mean, he's certainly quite an adventurous type, so um, yeah, it, it might be that he, you know, he gets out on it and uses it to its full potential. It would be nice to, uh, to see that, certainly. And it's a motor gadget. Is it, what are they, Chrono Classic? Yeah, do you know, I forget all the names, but yeah, I think that is a Chrono Classic, isn't it? It's like um, a modern recreation of the original Smiths, isn't it? That's it, yeah. So, yeah, you know, for us, perfect for the build. Got that nice classic look, yeah. um, but with all the lights and, and everything else that we need. Gives you a volt reading, gives you miles per hour revs. Yeah, every, everything you could need on that is on there. And the tank, that's definitely not a stock tank, is it? That's, no. Yeah. That's, that looks like blood, sweat, tears, swear words, <laughs> no sleep, all of that wrapped yeah. up in... Yeah, me, me and Des, um, yeah, we put a lot of work into that, and uh, yeah, it's, it's, you've got it's, the, the buck here. Let me just grab that. So that can you see, see that down. So that's that's how it. Do you do a sketch before you get to this point? We do. We do. We so we we strip the bikes. So we've got frame and engine sitting on its wheels on the ramp, and then we take a picture of that and sketch over it to get our lines. So if once you've got that and you're happy, yeah, would you then go straight to aluminium? Would you start laying up any? No, straight to aluminium. Yeah. No, I mean sometimes we do a bit. Some we I'll I'll lay cardboard over this to get it's ourselves a template. <laughs> um, yeah. So we will lay cardboard over it to get us ourselves a template, and then we'll um, we'll lay those cardboards onto aluminium, draw around them. Oversize you, you'd rather it. go that way than the sort of clay and sculpting. Yeah, that for, for me that's enough. In. You know, I can see the lines. I can see what I want to produce. Um, I do lots of measurements on the bike. You know, getting tank widths, working out where clip-ons are going to end up to make sure we've got plenty of steering lock. Yeah, but then um, the shape is in your head. Shapes, yeah, pretty much in so our, it's in our head. Head to that to this. That's it. Yeah, with, with a couple of months in between. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I'm not. I haven't taken a, a tank off with Ruxnar. Is there much capacity underneath or is there uh, a load the, of guts under yeah, there? Yeah, the, I mean the fuel pump itself is fairly large. There's quite a big arm that comes over and sits down the bottom here. Um, so that was probably one of the most challenging parts to get the fuel pump fitting in the base of the tank which we fabricated and fitting on the bike. And once we've got that, actually Des was working on that while I was working on the skin. Right. So once I'm, I'd made the skin and Des had finished that, we joined the two together. And how do um, you... Um, Calibrate a, a fuel level sensor. Is it like a thermostat? This hasn't actually got a fuel level sensor. No, yeah. So, so kind is of it an old school classic? Pop the cap off, give it a sprush. Exactly. See if you've got enough left. Yeah. 
yeah, exactly that. You know, it's um, there are options for that sometimes, but it also involves having a fuel level gauge, and yeah. and that can can detract from the look of the bike if the speedo doesn't accommodate that. So, um, but the customer's happy to have that more race inspired. Just yeah, I, for me, I like feel. some of those kind of features. We get on our bikes and we turn the fuel tap on, or and we, you you want to be quite involved with what you're yeah. riding and. Just having to open the cap and slosh it around, that's kind of part of the fun. It's and old school, isn't it? Yeah. Well, certainly for me, it reminds me of being a kid and being on bikes that didn't have any of that stuff. Yeah, I agree. And engine-wise, it's stock internally, isn't it? Yep. And you've uh, treated the, the side casings to Cerakote? Yep, on the Cerakote on the engine covers. Yep. Uh, and then also Cerakote on the um, throttle bodies. Okay. Uh, did you machine those down in the end? Yeah, machine the sort of some of the logos that are on there and, and kind of lost that kind of carburetor look, which Triumph yeah. went for, um, just to go for a bit more of a, yeah, kind of subtle look, if you like. And you, is this a an, an aftermarket intake, the sort of two into one? The rubber part itself is actually yeah. the stock part, which goes right. to the normal big plastic air box, and okay. then we've, we've you, fabricated you've that part. fabricated this alum, I guess yeah. it's aluminium, isn't it? That's aluminium, yeah. With a big can on the back. And it's also got the um, air temperature sensor and, and uh, right. air flow meter and everything else, and it maps it. We've, we've not skirted over it, but probably the, the most important part of this bike, which makes it different to the customs that we've seen thus far since the, uh, the new water cooled uh, Triumph range came out, is that this has got a completely fresh wiring loop, hasn't it? It has, yeah. The, the Triumph one, if you take the clocks off, you're buggered. You've got a ride-by-wire throttle, which makes it really difficult to modify. So you just decided to throw all that in the bin and start from scratch. Yeah, we wanted, you know, obviously we put a lot of work into the body and the look of the bike, and we want the wiring loom to reflect that as also, you know, not by stuffing clocks under the tank or something, if, you know, because we can't remove them. So, because that's what only... some people do with the throttle, isn't it? Put a mechanism down the bottle, bottom, run a wire. And yeah, which we've and... still done on this, and that's, that's not a problem. You know, that's right. some people do that purely to get that nice cable feel back. Yeah. We've done it, one, for that reason, and two, to, to lose. Feel? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So that's on a two yeah. bearing sort of system down in the belly there. Um, basically yeah, all it means did you, did you is- you make that? We've made that, yeah. Right. So instead of your throttle being directly onto the fly by wire control unit, you know, you've got cables going to it. And as long yeah. as those, you know, we got those cables working nice and smooth and the, that unit on a two bearing system meant, you know, it pulls right. directly one to one. But really, yeah, so it is just being able to declutter all the wiring so and have full access to the engine to be able to control the fueling and um, really get the most out of the engine with our new intake and exhaust so um, I know from chatting to you that that was a massive headache for you and the other guys involved yeah starting because Trump for they're a fairly uh, closed shop when it comes to sharing information, so you, you really were going in blind, weren't you? Yeah, very so difficult. With a 270 degree crank, it's not straightforward as maybe some of the other engines are. So when we got to the mapping stage, there was a few bits of head scratching. Um, we actually worked with a, a company, X Bikes, Chris from X Bikes, who did a they fantastic. Sort of Norfolk way, aren't they? That's it, yeah. I think they used way. to do a bit of work for. For Dutch, Dutch things. Yeah. yeah Gr great bikes. company, um, father and son, you know, d did a real great job, put a lot of time into the wine loom. And um, we do a new ECU? Or? So it's a new ECU um, and uh, a fly by wire control unit, which is all under the seat here. Um, oh, that's pretty neat. So, and that incorporated with the, the new M unit as well. This switch here is actually for a race mode, um, which pops an LED on up at the dash okay. um, with ignition on. LED so on race mode all there. All red, you're in race mode. Or back in the you know, sort of town okay. mode, which is just a bit of a, you know, a dulled down. And is that map. similar to the, the sport and road and rain that they have as standard? Or yeah, exactly, yeah. Aggressive? Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's very similar. Obviously, we tr with, in race mode, we tried to get the most out of it. Yeah. Um, and in the town mode, we just did a, you know, more of a, a softer map. Um, what, what's this, what's so this that's here? That's the uh, quick shift. So it's got a quick shifter as well? Yeah. And, and this is all the new loom that that's uh, it, yeah. X bikes made. So we use Deutsch plugs, which um, just make easy maintenance and working on. These are quick release sort of plugs. Yeah, so you um, get in there, that's sort of F1 MotoGP spec, isn't it? Exactly, yeah, that kind of race kind of vibe. Again, there's two down here and another one this side and two up the top here as well. Yeah. So just while we're talking about this uh, tail section, Dan, uh, flick that switch, Callum. I like, I, like, I like that there. That makes me very happy. It's nice, isn't it? Yeah, really nice. The M units are, you know, a great product. Makes our the wiring side, the light side of things, very easy. And is this how all the M units come? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Just come. Like, I mean, it's a great unit for anyone. Even you know, having to go at wiring at home, it really does. Um, it makes wiring any custom bike a, yeah. a you know a simple method, really. And this uh, tail section, if you come round from sort of this way down, uh, you pointed out how nicely this is finished. And 
There isn't a seam under there at all, is there? No, that's no. just all one piece. Yeah, so I see that. Yeah, that's the bottom part which we we make and, and make sure it marriages up to the sort of electrics box there, and um, and then the top part's welded to that. So is this two sides, or is it a top and a bottom? How, how did you make this? Uh, that is a top and bottom. Yeah, so that's one piece, the whole top. So this whole yeah. bit here is one piece. Yeah, yeah. Um, sorry, yeah. And then it's got a, a, another section in the back, and then welded to the bottom. Yeah. And then um, you just rasp it all down and sand it back. And yeah, that's it. Yeah, a lot of the welds are fused, so there's not there's not big heavy build up of weld or anything. Right. So um, they run through the English wheel or planish flat. And you hate filler, don't you? We try, yeah, to have a you know a, just a slight yeah, skim. Um, but you should have a good metal finish. So that's yeah. um, for the most part. You know, this is what this is what this bike is. You know, in bare metal, it looks you know as it does here. But um, so it could have been polished up. But mm -hmm. you know, we decided I like paintwork as well. You know, as much as I like metal work. So. Yeah. Um, and you've got your own body shop and you do your own paintwork. Yeah. It's all done in-house. Yeah, so yeah, so we get to the end of fabrication stage, Des goes away with the seat and, and starts up work on the trim mm -hmm. and then I start work on the paint. And, and again, this way we've skirted over, but this, this tail was to match the, the tank and that's again an aluminium. All aluminium, aluminium tail, aluminium yeah. Skin. That's it, and with this sort of um, angle at the back of the tank, we, you know, we sort of followed that line as well there in the tail. That's really um, smart. And again, as, as on the XJR, we've got these uh, lovely pro bolt fixings, which really smart. Yeah, probably really finishes it off. And again, yeah, on the seat, similar to the XJR. Is this alloy or steel this one? Steel pan, yeah, steel. again, steel, you know, thin gauge steel. With well, just to give a little bit more rigidity. Yeah, we, we've tried the aluminium, but it's just the way we make this, it's easier to do it out of steel. And yeah, um, yeah it gives plenty of strength, so. And we, we mentioned the, uh, the shocks when we're up front, but the finish is really nice. This gunmetal grey anodizing on these Maxtons is Lovely. Yeah, it's a really nice finish. They, they it's normally nice come not piggybacked as well. Yeah, I like that. You know, I wanted this classic look for this, yeah. and I'd seen some racers at Goodwood actually racing with these shocks on, and that sort of inspired that. And um, they did the, the titanium finish for us, which is, normally they come in black, and that really suited the build. You know, I think that looks, you know, fits perfectly on here. And again, same as the, same as the front. Obviously, the clear anodized on sandblasted stock rim, but stainless, stainless spokes. Stainless that's spokes. it. Yeah, and then both blast hubs as well. And these are Metzler Racetech K3s. Race tech K3s. Yeah, they're road going sort of, but very tracky tire. Yeah. You know. um, and you rode this at Goodwood when you filmed the bike last week. Yeah, yeah, we had a yeah, it was amazing. A perfect place to test it. Perfect place to shoot it and film yeah. it, and um, it just looked at home there, really. So it was um, yeah, and it, and it looked like a moist day. I bet, I bet yeah. it was scary riding around on a, what is it, 12 months work? Yeah, that was, yeah, was certainly a concern, but obviously we, um, we weren't there to set any lap times, we were there just mm. to test the bike out. Oh, and, I can see that. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> It's no, all right-handers, good, good right, as you'll yeah, know that. That's, that's true. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, yeah, okay, fair enough. I'll let you have that. And the exhaust is all your own work, isn't it? Yeah, all stainless so exhaust. Um, front, front to back, made in what, in sections? You have, yeah. You haven't got a mandrel bend, have you? So no, no, got, so we buy in mandrel bends. Uh, so that's something we should, should mention. Is your workshop, it's a lovely workshop, but it's quite meagre, isn't it? It hasn't got like Bailey Tools over in that corner or sponsored by Lincoln and... Yeah, yeah, you know. no, it's all, I mean, we, as, as we, each build we do, you know, we, we try and, you know, get another bit of tooling and, um, yeah. you know, that's just been a build up over the sort of past four or five years. But yeah, I mean, we could do with all sorts of pieces of equipment, but you can, it's amazing what you can do with, um, you know, a hammer and a piece of wood and, yeah. uh, or... Um, and this is lovely shape is. And what, what was the reason for going two into one rather than having like the standard bike having one each side. I'm just not, a ma I'm not a massive fan of symmetry, really. <laughs> That's one of the yeah, reasons. I'm, I'm with you there. Um, and yeah, just, just something a bit different. Obviously, stock bike has to, you know, pipe each side. Um, we just like the idea of, it's quite a traditional sort of look. You know, some of the early Triumphs sort of did this, this type of exhaust and um, there was an opportunity to do it there and, and, you, and it worked you, well. You blanked off the O2 centre, is that, is that so it can run with them? Yeah, so we fit them, a, a, a big lamb sensor goes in there for the, um, for obviously when we're on the dyno, but right. um, yeah, as soon as that work's done, then the map will stay as is. It doesn't, you know, yeah. it doesn't change due to weather or anything. And fully um, adjustable Rizoma rear sets? Well, it's Rizoma, sides, part Rizoma. We, uh, we cannibalised some uh, Ducati Rizoma rear sets yeah. and, uh, and made our own brackets to So, so to this, suit. Is, this is you, you've made this bracket here? That's it, yeah. Right. Uh, we were going to start fabricating our own, but you know, when someone does something so well, you know, why do we need to go and, and yeah. spend time doing so it? Is so is this another fast tech uh, they did machine that for us actually, yeah. but we designed, actually my cousin, um, he works in uh, sort of CAD design and stuff and I worked with him to, to produce those. Right. Uh, so we just sent the design to Fast Tech and machined it for us. And transmission kit, is that a Renthal sprocket? Uh, that sprocket is actually from, is it MNC? 
I think that's where it's from. Uh, all, funny enough, I think they make some of the Renfield sprockets, but right. uh, and the chains from Fancy them as well. Too. That's it. Um, sure, I battery under swing arm as well. That's so that, that's that's hidden down. That's under it. There. Yeah, yeah. With that's the red, the red wreck is that the stock position? It's in the same place, but it's very different, you right. know, because we've had to fit the battery down there. There's, there's normally an ABS unit down there which yeah. we've got rid of. And you were showing me something fancy earlier that, so that you didn't have loads of cables. I don't know if you can get in here, Dan. But so there weren't loads of cables uh, bunched up on top of the battery. There's a, a disconnect here, so you can unbolt the battery so you can then lower it down safely without arcing off the exactly. swing arm or back of the engine or anything. That's it. So can we um, go outside and fire this one up? Absolutely. Cool. Come on then, let's, uh, let's hear it rumble. That's fierce, I That's like that. <laughs> The noise police on you in a minute. I bet that sounded epic around Goodwood. Oh, it was it was so addictive around Goodwood. You yes, might, might shout some dank facts. We shut her off. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Goodwood, the noise was just uh, so addictive. So Riding one, one it, bike like, on its own, going around the track, but you heard it all the way around. Yeah, just constant. And I'm coming down into like Woodcote, dropping down the gears. It was just like bah, bah, you know, just this such a good bark. Um, so but yeah, that was it. Was a, it was quite a special day being at Goodwood and, and filming the, the it there. Quick shifter, does it does it cut the throttle? Can you keep it wide open and stand yeah, through? Yeah, wide open. Just you know, go clutchless. straight through it. Yeah, clutches. Yeah, it sounded really great. Has it still got the traction control? Uh, no traction control. Set up? No, no, that's no, all no. gone. Yeah, yeah. So we're um, yeah, it's all powered to the so wheel. So it's proper old school. There's yeah, the on the throttle. Yeah, yeah. actually, we had, it was a bit damp in the morning, so um, it's a bit squirmy. Yeah, a little, little bit. Yeah. yeah, obviously not pushing too hard, but um, yeah, coming out of chicane was a little bit damp, so mm. certainly woke me up. So <laughs> <laughs> I think it's lovely. And when do, when do we reckon the uh, on track video footage will be ready? Uh, Co hopefully, yeah, weeks? yeah, hopefully a couple of weeks. You know, Will and that they've uh, and Will and Ollie have gone away and, and working on the edit now, so. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty eager to see it, so... Um, and then you can finally deliver it to the very, very patient customer. Exactly, yeah, that um, would be a nice day for us and hopefully for him. Well, one bite that we're not going to get a go on, isn't it? That's the problem, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, sorry, no, well, thanks for bringing it down. Wait for the train. Oh.